Do you like money? Do you enjoy helping people? And most importantly, do you have an extensive history of criminal negligence that allow me to introduce you to Prison Architect? So this is a game that requires the utmost planning, care, and cramming 1,000 prisoners into a single cell. Because today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So Prison Architect begins like most prisons, as a plot of land bought by a private hedge fund. Over here, we have our work people who are gonna be arriving so that we can actually start to build the prison. In the bottom left, we have all the different menus and options of things that we can place. The first thing we want to do is just go ahead and build a building. Now we can see that our diligent workmen are going to go and build the whole infrastructure here so that we can house a uh, very ethical prison. We do start with a decent amount of capital, but we are eventually going to need more money, and the way you make money in this game is by accepting prisoners. As our workmen finish up the very first infrastructure, now we actually have a building where we can house all sorts of things. The first thing we need is a reception area to receive and process prisoners uh, and really show them the ropes of how to exist in the prison. Each room is a variety of needed objects for us to actually make the room into a working reception desk. So now that we've placed all the necessary objects, our workmen will go ahead, put them all in, and then we have an actual reception area. We're also going to need a holding cell to actually keep all of our prisoners because in about 14 hours, we're going to have our very first group of people arriving. Normally, a holding cell is temporary. It's where you hold all your prisoners and then you take them to their cells. Of course, as the enlightened warden I am, we don't use these things called cells. Instead, we will have one community holding cell where we will hold 1,000 prisoners by the end of this video, or get prosecuted by the government for crimes against humanity. But either one is good for me. So we've also gone ahead and made a canteen and a kitchen because uh, the government does mandate we feed our prisoners, but the government also mandates that our holding cell has a toilet, if you can believe that. And of course, I mean, who am I to not respect uh, government regulation? Now, while the game doesn't mandate we have beds in here, and believe me, I don't want to put any in here, it's probably a good idea to actually do that so that our prisoners don't riot. Of course, rioting later in the game is okay, because we're going to have a couple more uh, interesting options. To the north, we're also going to need a staff area up here so that we can house offices and places for our warden to work and guards to rest. So because we've built an office here, we can go ahead and hire a warden, and now he can start working, and more importantly, researching things. Now we could get security, policy, psychology, health, education, of course, the first thing we really need to get is finance. I mean, how else are we gonna get tax relief and then inevitably an offshore tax haven? And as someone who graduated from university with a major in accounting, uh, I know just how useful this is. Of course, I was close to not graduating because I uh, almost failed accounting ethics. Now, an employee's office is a sacred space to them where they do all their work, which is why I've decided to make some cost-cutting measures and not give them walls. The only difference between an employee and a prisoner is that I am legally required to pay one of them. So with our prisoners coming in about an hour, we need to do some last minute preparations, uh, hire a couple cooks, maybe spare the exuberant expense and hire a single guard. On a more minor note, I also went ahead and built a uh, six mile fence around the prison. Can't have the employees escaping now, or the prisoners. All right, and our very first batch of unfortunates is going to get here, eight whole prisoners who will live in our uh, luxurious uh, quarters. So as you might have noticed in the top right, that actually went ahead and increased our cash flow. The more prisoners we have, the higher our daily cash flow is. And the more cash flow means we can hire more guards. So with our prisoners, Prisoners in the complex, now our guards are just gonna go ahead and search them, find any contraband, probably a couple guns, because I imagine this is in America, and then they're gonna go take them to the holding cell, where they will essentially live out the rest of their, how long is their sentence? Uh, four years for kidnapping. <laughs> oh. Okay. Something else we could do is adjust our schedule. So here we have the entire schedule for the whole prison. It's separated into minimum security, medium security, and maximum security, because we should be separating the prisoners. Um should. While our prisoners go ahead and eat some expired MREs, we can actually go ahead and look at one of the better ways to make money. The government has decided to help us out with a whole bunch of grants. So here if we take this one, Basic Detention Center, we have a bunch of objectives, we get a bit of an advanced grant, and then if we complete all of these, we get even more money. So as soon as we zone a shower here temporarily, and then I immediately unzone it, uh, we'll actually get our grant completion payment. 
We've also gone ahead and give our prisoners the uh, luxurious yard they've always wanted. But between you and me, I think there's just not enough to do here, so we can add a, uh, a fun activity. There we go. Now our prisoners can play the fun game of try not to get shot. I am going to go ahead and research maintenance because our prison is beginning to look like someone systematically threw up in every single location. Because a holding cell doesn't let us actually raise our prisoner capacity, for that we need a dormitory. So I'm going to start building a dormitory over here. Also, apparently two prisoners say they are well treated. Well, oh, okay, one now. That one guy is single-handedly carrying our Yelp reviews. All right, so our six more prisoners have arrived right behind the, <laughs> the industrial steel supply truck. Oh no, contraband of uh, equipment, cigarettes. Oh, and a, is that a pen? No, I'm too innocent. That was a shiv. Ah, uh, it brings me joy to see them really relax in our <laughs> luxurious common room. I don't think they can move past this single spot. They're trying to... Oh, no, they can. They can... Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty roomy there. We also need to build something extremely important to our prison, being solitary confinement. How else am I going to arbitrarily throw people into one-by-one -one cells? I just realized we've also not been washing any of the food of our staff for the past... Well, several days. Not that I'm really all that concerned, but you know, I just would like to know about it. All right, now we have seven prisoners who say they're well treated. Yeah, this is this is the epitome of ethics. One thing that we have to think about, which is the eternal conflict of running a prison that will eventually be based on guns and firepower, is something called suppression. So each one of these prisoners has hopes, feelings, dreams, emotions, all that, you know, things that we're inevitably going to crush. When surrounded by guards, armed guards, and things that generally threaten them, prisoners will be suppressed, so they're less likely to be violent and start riots. The downside of that is that prisoners who are suppressed also don't work. And what's the point of running a prison if you can't force everyone to work in the farming fields without pay? Oh my god, I, I was not paying attention. There are six injured prisoners, one is unconscious. I think they beat each other with garbage bags. Well, it seems like the only reasonable solution is to uh, assign more guards. It's also unfortunate that we haven't really researched cleaning, uh, so I can't clean any of the blood off this floor. Oh, actually, I have researched cleaning, but the janitors cost $500, so instead, I'd prefer to research prison labor so they could do it themselves. So now that our second building is done, I can go over here and assign people to work at the cleaning cupboard, which basically just means we're trying to get extremely cheap labor. I'm glad that we have uh, 26 prisoners who are gonna be arriving, and they will be stepping straight into seeing boxes and boxes of bleach. And with our 20-something prisoners arriving, $3,500 cash flow, which means... Doo -doo 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 -doo. All right, now we're finally starting to feel the effects of smashing a ton of prisoners into a small cramped room. And it's also showing the necessity of getting a dormitory so that we can cram even more people in. So if you're wondering why I'm building an infirmary and actually staffing it with all the correct equipment, the reason is because there's actually a grant to give me money for having an infirmary. After that, if someone wakes up missing a piece of their liver or kidney, uh, well, legally, I, I'm shocked. And making our dormitory, this is going to be the grand 1,000 holding thing we're gonna actually put everyone into. We do need to update some of these systems from our holding cell. And I know what you're thinking. This... This whole thing is just barbaric, and I couldn't agree more. So of course, I have made some vast improvements. It's also clear we don't have nearly enough housing over here, so we, we need to give our prisoners a little bit of space. Just try and convince me that that is not comfortable. Oh, apparently a fight has broken out over here, uh, but I think we've solved it because we have so many bunk beds, the prisoners can't even get to each other. All in all, despite the fact that we have 40 prisoners locked up in a single room with um, utilities included, our prison is actually doing very well. And a new day means a new shipment of 21 more prisoners, a little bit over our capacity. Oh, I don't like that. Apparently, uh, Earth has destroyed our fence. Luckily, the- oh, oh my god, what is going on? <laughs> Ah, I see the problem. I have actually not given anyone access to a shower in the last six days. On the bright side, now they all get to bathe themselves in the broken toilet water. Well, it's a surprise that no one has died yet. Uh, I mean, we're just beating the prisoners unconscious and then bringing them to the canteen to feed them. Sounds like the American dream to me. In the midst of being beaten by the guards, 24 people say, hey, this place isn't that bad. I mean, truly, when I look, I see uh, paradise all around. 
And we've got our first riot. Well, this is this is unsurprising. On the bright side, we can go ahead and call in uh, the boys. I mean, we're only up to three deaths. That's okay, four. All right, and look at that. We didn't even really need the riot police declared up. It only took seven deaths. I think most of those were guards. In other words, we lost about $3,500. Ooh, that's rough. Apparently our doctors uh, are necromancers. That is going to be very helpful. Ironically, the prisoners are complaining mostly about safety, and so to solve that problem, they decided to riot and kill seven people. I feel safer already. It's good to see that our advanced system of utilities is working like a charm. Everyone is being forced to assert dominance over each other. Oh, our prisoners look a little untidy. Well, how about you give me a break, Mr. Psychiatrist? Why don't you come in here and try to break up the mass murder? Okay, so our danger level is maxed. Uh, 36 people are shackled. Two people have been killed. Really? That's down from seven. And three prisoners have serious complaints, which is uh, 56 less than I would have thought. Oh my god, we have 28 families waiting to visit and eight people up for parole. And then also the minor detail of uh, 33 more prisoners arriving. Oh, and another morning, another general riot. On the bright side, they have showers now, and that's a uh, mild improvement. We're, we're just gonna ignore that right now. Oh, look, more, more prisoners. Oh my God. So something we could do, part of having a tidy prison, is uh, cleaning up our prisoners by walling them into solitary confinement. Here we have Stevenson, who was convicted to essentially life for murder. I think has killed multiple guards in the prison uh, and is an all around menace to society. So naturally the answer is to give him a little bit of alone time. And we'll, uh, we'll check back on him in about uh, two weeks. All right, so in trying to get my prisoners to work, it seems they don't really want to. Uh, I wonder why. So we have to give them ample reason to do so. Okay, with yet another fight breaking out, it's becoming increasingly clear that we need to resort to slightly drastic measures. Over here is the lovely place known as the Armory. And of course, I mean, what could we put in the Armory? By adding a bunch of guard lockers, this actually increases our capacity to begin recruiting armed guards. Oh, I don't like that. Now look, Mr. CEO, I, I understand there is multiple injuries in the prison. Sure, seven people did die, and we are vastly over our capacity for prisoners, but I, I mean, look, man, it's, it's not a big deal. As a matter of fact, I can literally watch these people fight to death over here while the CEO is calling me, and okay, he just died in front of me. What if I just don't pick up the phone? It's not like he can call me forever. It's been two days and he is still on the phone. This is a man of nothing but commitment, will, and focus. Okay, Mr. CEO, if you if you want to fire me for killing like seven people, what's it gonna be? Oh, it's literally nothing. He called me to talk about how reformed prisoners will bring on an additional cash reward. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he should have called me about. So the violence is escalating ever so slightly, and this is where we need to bring in our drastic measures. By hiring a couple of armed guards, uh, these guys do not mess around. By making a patrol that goes directly through the toilets, we can actually just assign multiple armed guards into here. So now at all times, we've got two dudes with shotguns, patrolling the dormitory housing 89 people. What could go wrong? Oh dear, it seems a lot of our prisoners have a drug problem. Yeah, well, I think one of them has a suffocating in the wall problem. Although on the bright side, it looks like putting the two armed guards here, he's pushing him off the toilet. It has all but solved the violence of our prisoners, as now we have 76 people who are suppressed. Sure, it means they're less likely to work all the programs, but it also means they're less likely to kill each other. Or more importantly, destroy property. I mean, these bunk beds cost $500. That's that's the same amount as a human being guard. So I just zoned seven more solitary confinement cells and I realized uh, 40 awaiting solitary confinement. That is almost half the prison. Also, let's let's check back in on Stevenson. It looks like he has learned his lesson. Uh, he does need a couple of things like bladder, sleep, hygiene, family, recreation, comfort, environment, clothing, literature, luxuries. But all in all, he is extremely suppressed and has gone one day without an incident. Now, I would let him out, but he's committed a pretty heinous crime of uh, forcing dogs to dance with cloud shoes on the dog man. What? While in prison, he likes to pat the guard dogs, which generally does not go down well. In an unrelated sense, sentenced to 65 years for multiple crimes, including murder, trafficking, and perjury. 
but at least he's a good cook. And look at that. We've still got one prisoner saying they're well treated and you know for a fact it's Stevenson. I also didn't realize that for the longest time I wasn't feeding my staff. I had set up the whole canteen system wrong. So, you know, it works wonders when people can eat. Not that I would know what that feels like. Our prison has evolved to the point where they're not even using shanks. They're just stabbing each other with swords and the guards don't care. To be fair, I also don't care. I'd also not read the CEO's letter. Let me take a look at that. Oh no, I clicked delete. 13 of my prisoners are addicted to drugs. That low? We are running into the slight issue of being over capacity, so it's about time that we expand the prison a great deal to include more dorms. Or rather, to include more beds in the one dorm. So right now, we're about to expand the prison out, and all the bunk beds here are gonna cost a ton of money, so we do need a bit more. For that reason, I am gonna start requesting a couple Supermax prisoners, and a legendary prisoner when we uh, eventually get one available. To make even more money, we also need to open a shop. Because as much as the government is paying us $22,000 a day to run our prison, uh, we can get more. Most notably from our future employees. Oh my god, for a second I thought my prisoners were surrendering to getting shot, but it seems like they're just practicing. So now that we have a shop, or we'll almost have a shop, this is where prisoners spend money that they get from jobs, their family, or, you know, hopefully taking out loans. You can keep the shampoo, or you can keep your legs but you can't keep both. You know, I'm not sure why the game says uh, eight armed guards are in service, as if it's a bad thing. I mean, quite frankly, that should be green. And 12 prisoners are shackled in their cells. I mean, how is that a bad thing either? This is a prison. That's the point. Well, we've got two deaths today, and that's, I mean, that's the first number of deaths we've had in a long time, so I'd say we're winning. Now that we have the expansion to the dormitory, we can go ahead and raise that 132 prisoner cap. That's what I like to see. I I like how in our prison we have 27 max sec, 81 medium sec, and one min sec. This man is choosing to stay in the dorm room next to the armed guards because I think he realized he's safer near them than not. The expansion also lets me take cell block C, raised by prisoner capacity to 100, which we've done, so that is a free $30,000. It's good that the government doesn't come in here and inspect what kind of prison we're running. They just kind of take our word for it and go, all right, that sounds about right. And our next short term goal will be 200 prisoners with again our main goal to have 1,000 prisoners in one room. It looks like our newest group of prisoners has just arrived and it is that is a lot of buses. And there he is, Barry, the very volatile Supermax prisoner. Now, Supermax prisoners are pretty scary. I mean, uh, possession, intent to supply, whatever. Murder, perjury, aggravated assault. Also, I like how the game says, uh, days without incident, 2.8 days, when someone was shanked to death in the shower yesterday. I guess at this point, it's just a normal occurrence, so. Either way, Barry is going to be greeted by a, uh, 24-hour solitary confinement. And here we go. Barry will be escorted to his cell momentarily, uh, which will also be his final resting place. The thing is, if we go into our finances, you'll see that we are paid about $150 every day per prisoner. Even more than that, we're compensated every time we accept a new prisoner. So the government basically paid us $2,000 to seal Barry here in a brick wall. And if I go ahead and crunch the numbers, a uh, brick wall costs $50. So that is $1,950 of profit. And the reason we need to keep accepting more people is, uh, as you can see, these bunk beds cost a lot of money. All right, and that should be enough uh, for our prisoners to live or survive more accurately. We've also hired someone very, very important to the prisoner, uh, the lawyer, so that we can go into a research and start a little bit of legal prep just in case something bad happens. And by bad, I mean criminal negligence. All right, so we just completed our 200 capacity grant. Now we have 206 and now we can move up to 500 prisoners. On the south side of the prison, I am going to go ahead and build a little complex for all of our super max prisoners that because I believe we're getting yes 15 more of them tomorrow and if we keep them with the rest of the people that will result in casualties which means less money I love that my workmen are somehow confident enough to uninstall the prisoners beds while they're sleeping in them awfully brave of you to do that to the guy sentenced to 35 years for murder so a fresh new set of prisoners has arrived which is nonetheless a cool many many thousands of dollars and I'm going to immediately take that money and use it to research an offshore tax haven it's also probably time we hire a couple more guards. I mean, the ratio of free guards to free prisoners is... 
Eh, that's pretty bad. So we'll just go ahead and slightly increase that number all the ways up to a cool... Uh, wow, I don't even have enough money to hire more guards. All this time, I'm realizing that the armory has been without electricity. So all the loading of the guns and everything is just being done in the pitch black. If I suddenly get a death notification from here, I will know why. Alternatively, uh, it might have something to do with the, like, 60 prisoners that are in the holding cell. Oh my god. And they're all sharing two showers. I can hear of just like beating on each other. Or at least I, I hope that's what sound that is. Yet despite the frequent number of deaths, our actual needs of all the prisoners are, are pretty much being met. I wonder if the prisoners ever get scared when I'm hiring the guards because I just go over here where like 16 people are and a dude with a shotgun materializes from the void. Then immediately starts patrolling the bathrooms and walks into the toilet. The one unfortunate thing about having so many armed guards is that our prisoners are so so suppressed, they refuse to go to any kind of classes. The only thing they want is parole. So with our next shipment of happy go lucky prisoners, uh, which is almost entirely supermax prisoners, we are now just going to thrust them into the confines with all of the minimum, medium, maximum security, everything. I'm sure it'll be fine. To account for all the supermax prisoners, uh, we actually have built a kennel. Here we can load a bunch of dog crates into here and increase our capacity for dog handler. I'm also going to go ahead and put a bunch of dog bowls all over the prison. I may not be above mistreating my staff, but I do have standards. Dogs are actually able to sniff out tunnels, so we can put dog handlers all around the corners of the prison in order to make sure that no one escapes. Oh my god! Our dogs have already discovered a tunnel that's going out this far. They have tunneled from this toilet all the ways over here. So to make sure we actually catch this, we can go ahead and do a tunnel search in all sectors, and our guards will go about searching every single location the tunnels can be. For whatever reason, they didn't actually find any, so instead of doing just a tunnel search, we're gonna do a full shakedown. 717 places to search, and oh my god. I'm looking at the contraband that we're finding it. How did someone smuggle a barbed wire bat into the prison? Our fences aren't even made of barbed wire, so that means that someone had to have brought barbed wire outside found a baseball bat, and taped it to the thing. I mean, it couldn't possibly be families because we have 170 families waiting to visit. I hate to inform you, but uh, they're gonna be waiting a long time. Oh my God. Oh no, one of the prisoners got a hold of a shotgun. Well, they killed a guard, knocked out one of the armed guards, and I think there's a shotgun lying around on the floor right now. But I mean, all around, I would, uh, I mean, I'd consider that a success. That's, that's not that bad. Never mind the fact that our guards can't seem to actually discover the tunnel right here. Aha! There we go. Our guards were unable to find the tunnels. Oh my, it just keeps going. They were getting pretty close. Well, now we can at least remove this. Uh, it's a good thing we have dogs now, so we will be able to spot all the future toilets or future tunnels. All right, the danger level in the prison is starting to slowly rise, so I think I should do the rational, well-adjusted thing and hire nine more armed guards. If ever there's a problem in this prison, the only solution is probably more gun. And on that topic, we can actually start researching guard towers, which will give us snipers that we can station outside the prison. I could also get surveillance to get CCTV cameras, but do I really want anything in this prison recorded on video? If anything, I just want to spend $50,000 thousand dollars and uh pay my lawyer dear god i've forgotten that this is this is the yard they still have to go to they have, they're fitting almost 300 prisoners look at this guard he i am terrified for this guy i mean i don't know how people aren't starting fights and just like beating each other to death at this point look at this blob this is like an ant hive man this prison really is paradise there's a guy unconscious in the door and he's just being hit by it every five seconds well, it seems that our boy in solitary confinement has learned his lesson and somehow turned into a guard on break. Now, I would consider this man rehabilitated. Meanwhile, Barry over here is... What, what is happening? My guards are just phasing through the walls to greet the prisoners. Oh, well, this is the biggest... Oh my god. Well, immediately the right thing to do is to call all the billions of riot police. All right, we're up to 18 deaths right now. Uh, that, you know, this might not be very good. If anything... 
I'm just gonna turn on Free Fire. And look at that, with only the cool cost of 66 deaths today, uh, we have quelled the riot on our own. Oh, I didn't realize the dead riot police officers. I mean, I could just dismiss them and it's, it's like they didn't die. Well, I see where a lot of the deaths came from. Uh, we lost 10 armed guards. Good thing I have the human capital to just replace them and to add a couple more, uh, you know, normal guards. We're also importing our very first legendary prisoner who will be giving us a cool $15,000. You know, one part of me wants to turn off Free Fire, but on the other part, um, let's let's just leave it on for right now. I just, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, oh, now we're being called by the mayor. The media have started a campaign over the amenities granted to prisoners, and it's bringing a lot of heat on my office. I'm passing a bill which bans TVs in common areas in prisons? We have six hours. I'm glad that the mayor is really concerned about the right thing. I mean, we have a single TV in the common room, but hey, who am I to argue with our benevolent government? It's good that the introduction that all these people are having to the prison is a dead dude being escorted through the front lobby. <laughs> Better yet, I think we have our very first legendary prisoner who's gonna be coming from one of these buses. Aha, and here he is, Gullifer, the legendary prisoner who, uh, we don't really know a lot about this character, but this prisoner is allegedly the criminal underworld has numerous skills and abilities that make them very dangerous. Well, Gulliford, I'm really glad that you decided to tell everyone about this. Something tells me this is not going to be a happy call. Yesterday was a very dark chapter in the history of this prison. Far too many people lost their lives here. Make sure nobody else dies or you will face prosecution for criminal negligence. Well, unfortunately, we haven't actually completed the legal prep to get out of this, but uh, as long as 20 people don't don't die today, we should be okay. I'm also just gonna assign like 50 more guards to this room. There we go. I mean, it's all in the name of uh, keeping the peace. Some naked guy has stolen a baton and is trying his best to fight off the armed guards. Uh, I can't really tell what's happening, but you know, the big unconscious thing kind of tells the whole story. What I will do is just spam hire something like 60 guards because we are making a ludicrous amount of money every day. It brings me joy to see a couple of the people try to start a fight right here, not realizing I just hired 100 guards not even six feet away. I'm also gonna go ahead and turn this room into the new morgue, which is just filled with morgue slabs. Quite frankly, I'm not even sure if that's enough for all the dead bodies currently littering the prison. Also, I was originally gonna turn this whole area into a church, but I think it is better served as an infirmary. I'm a little scared of what's about to happen here, so I'm just gonna throw in about 20 more armed guards just to, you know, pacify the situation. We're up to 359 prisoners, so we are getting eh, not that far from our 1,000 goal. I also made a very tiny small expansion to the dormitory because right now i think we have about a hundred people living in this holding cell yeah this this uh might be a little dangerous for the prison we've got max sec minimum sec but you know i'm, I'm sure most of these people will be fine i mean that guy looks like jared from subway prisoner reformed reward people get reformed in this thing the only thing i do know is that i am now going to be slightly expanding our operation trust me this can only be good for my wallet and now we've even achieved cell block e so we've got our prisoner capacity all the ways up to 500 for our next grant we're gonna try to get the average reoffending rate down to 30 percent which um I'm gonna be honest, I only took this for the advance payment. I also didn't even realize that we cleared the hurdle. We didn't get prosecuted for criminal negligence. I mean, yet. And better yet, our legal prep is almost done. So next time we get yeah, have a you know, small little accident in the prison, uh, we're completely good in the eyes of the law. I think my favorite part about my staff is just going around and seeing all the locations that are on break. Like this guy sealed himself into a brick wall and decided, yeah, I'm gonna take a little break. Meanwhile, this guard is on break in the morgue. And then of course we still have Barry and his best friend, the, uh, the, the pissed off. Oh, Stanley, that's his name. What? Wait, what's happening? What's Oh no. Oh, that is not good. Well, there's only one way to solve this. If I go through and just sack a whole bunch of my armed guards, I will be able to rehire them right on the outside of the prison. Our armed guards, please. You, you guys are supposed to stop them from escaping. You're supposed to do something. There's just a line of prisoners. Oh no. 
Oh no! 50, 60, 70! The entire prison is escaping! 99 escapes and 8 deaths! And I have no idea what happened. Earth has destroyed our fence. And then every single person streamed through this narrow gap. Oh, well, I didn't even realize that there was actually a tunnel there. And now some prisoner is trying to steal a bunk bed. Dear God, what is happening? Well, now we're down to 250 prisoners. So the only rational thing I think to do is uh, enable taking in criminally insane people. It's the only way to boost our prisoner income or uh, intake and, and maybe be able to get up to a thousand before we get sued again. Put that cookie down. Our prisoners are starving. No, no, I'm, I'm sure we could fit the 300 of them into this kitchen. I was panning over to see how much our prison is worth um negative four million nine hundred and twenty thousand dollars something about the number of past escapes in the last 24 hours i don't know what they're talking about we have a pr disaster brewing far too many prisoners have escaped and it's your fault i wouldn't say my fault i would blame mother nature so now we have 24 hours to make sure that no one really escapes and i mean i could use my legal uh, defense for this one but this is probably not worth it i feel like death is a lot more likely in this prison than escape anyway, so. Well, it seems like our staff is about to go on strike. Uh, if they don't get a 50% pay rise. Unfortunately, this is probably the only time you will see me paying someone more, uh, because if our staff go on strike, I'm pretty sure everything will fall apart. So it seems I've realized a very minor problem, and it's that uh, the dormitory zoning room requirements are not working. I don't exactly know why that is. I've been trying to find out the, s the source of it, but uh, the problem this is kind of the outcome. Of course, the only real solution I could think of uh, is to assign about seven armed guards in here, and I'm pretty sure that should work. Oh no. Well, that isn't good. I was trying to unzone the dormitory, and it seems that the prisoners got slightly mad at me taking away all of their beds. I mean, we were able to deal with it with only 51 deaths. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is fine. Now, I know this might look bad now, but I think I have developed a much more efficient system for running a prison. Sure, it might look a little ugly, but this is truly the ideal system. I have deployed every single armed guard I possibly have in this room, and every single prisoner or, or just about every single prisoner is suppressed and compliant. Honestly, at this point, I kind of envy Barry. I feel like he's probably got off the easiest compared to everyone else. Ah, the CEO is calling us again, something about the high casualties. The mayor is calling us again. And again, the mayor only cares about, um, Wait, what was that? Oh no! Apparently there was an accident at a nearby facility, and all that means is that we get even more prisoners. I mean, the best part about this is that it is pretty efficient in terms of shakedowns. We have our legal prep work if the death thing becomes a bit of an issue, and all around, I mean, this is... This is looking pretty good. It seems someone left a shotgun somewhere in here, and um... Well, that's not go... Well, it took about three hours for my legal prep work to get done, and in that time period, uh, an entire riot happened. And now I am stuck in my own prison. Well, I think we can take an important and valuable lesson from this whole experience. Never, never, never forget to pay your lawyer.